Minister Liz Kendall. Mr Speaker, throughout the Covid pandemic, ministers repeatedly claimed they threw a protective ring around England's care homes and always followed the evidence and scientific advice. But WhatsApp messages from the former Health Secretary revealed in today's Telegraph suggest nothing could be further from the truth. Can the Minister now confirm that the Chief Medical Officer first advised the Government to test all residents going into care homes in early April 2020? Can she explain why the former Health Secretary rejected this advice and failed to introduce community testing until the 14th of August, a staggering four months later. Can she publish the evidence that following the advice would have muddied the waters, as the member for West Suffolk claimed? And can she confirm that 17,678 people died of COVID in care homes between the CMO's advice and the government finally deciding to act? She should know, Mr Speaker, because she was responsible for care homes at the time. Now, former ministers are touring the studios this morning, claiming this delay was simply because there weren't enough tests. Where is the evidence for this? And even if tests were in short supply, why weren't care home residents prioritised when the devastating impact of COVID was there for all to see? Now, Mr Speaker, nobody denies that dealing with COVID was unbelievably difficult, especially in the early days. But care home residents and staff were simply not a priority. Yet the former Prime Minister and Health Secretary were first warned about the emerging horror in care homes by my honourable friend, the Member for Hove, in March 2020. I myself raised the lack of testing in care homes with the Health Secretary. On the 8th of April, the 28th of April, the 19th of May and the 17th of June, long before the CMO's advice was finally followed. The Minister will no doubt say all these issues will be looked at in the public inquiry, but the findings from this won't be available for years. Mr Speaker, the families of the 43,000 care home residents who lost their lives will be appalled at the former Health Secretary attempting to rewrite history, an attempt that will turn to ashes along with his TV career. We need more humility and less celebrity from the member for West Suffolk. And above all, we need answers. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I say, actually, that I think it's relatively easy for the Honourable Member to come to the House today and make these highly political points. And knowing, actually, how she and I worked together in the pandemic, and she and I talked about all that we were doing to look after people in care homes, I am, as I say, shocked and disappointed in the tone that she has taken today when we are dealing with extremely serious questions. I will turn first to some of the difficult prioritisation decisions that were made given the limited quantity of testing that we had at the beginning of the pandemic. Mr Speaker, the Government followed the expert public health advice available at the time. We had the capacity to test just 3,000 cases a day in mid-March, and I am sure colleagues will understand why the health advice was at the time to prioritise those working on our NHS front line and, for instance, the testing of people in hospitals who had symptoms and, indeed, within care homes, again, people with symptoms. In fact, the courts have already agreed that our prioritisation decisions on testing were completely rational. As we dramatically ramped up testing capacity, Mr Speaker, we also adjusted that prioritisation in line with the public health advice and the capacity. So by mid-April, just a month later, 
With testing capacity exceeding 38,000, we were then in a position to test more widely. In fact, that's reflected in our adult social care plan, which was published on the 15th of April. That made clear that everyone being discharged from a hospital to a care home should be tested, even if asymptomatic, and that all discharged patients, regardless of the results of their test, should be isolated for 14 days. And it's worth reflecting, Mr Speaker, just what a dramatic increase in testing the Government oversaw, from just 3,000 in March 2020 to over 38,000 in mid-April to over 100,000 by mid-May, to the point where we could test many millions in a single week. We established the largest testing network in Europe from a standing start, and the science proves that it saved lives. Now, the Honourable Lady asked about uh, some of the content of the WhatsApp messages which have been published. And I would say to her, that is a selection of messages from a larger quantity of messages. And actually, clearly, while um, there were discussions and debates between ministers and between colleagues which took place in part on WhatsApp, there were clearly meetings and conversations and other forums in which advice was given and decisions made. And a huge quantity of that is with the uh, public inquiry. But I can say, to, for instance, that a meeting to, the, to discuss the uh, implementation of the uh, advice on testing um, was not referenced in the WhatsApp messages that she is talking about. But, for instance, there is an, uh, an email following exactly this exchange um, that she's referring to that says, we can press straight away, we can press ahead straight away with hospitals testing patients who are going to care homes and we should aspire to as soon as capacity allows and when we've worked out an operational way of delivering this that everyone going into a care home from the community could be tested. So as I say to her, she's, there's very selective information that she is basing her comments on. As I said, the Honourable Lady knows how the Government and me personally strained every sinew, worked day and night, did everything in our power to help people and specifically the most vulnerable during the pandemic. She and I spoke about it regularly during during our frequent calls. In fact, at the time, I appreciated her perspective, her questions, her insights from her own area of Leicester. And I say to her, we should go about this discussion in the right way for yeah. the country. Yeah. This is not the time to play political yeah. games. We should look to save lives. That's the purpose yeah. of the public inquiry, to learn lessons in the right way in case this should ever happen again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, Hill. No, no.